the best investment, passive investment, I, I think, is, is, is a good business. Uh, if you own an interest in a good business, uh, you're very likely to maintain purchasing power no matter what happens to the currency. One very undeniable thing about money is that it loses value over time. For instance, in 2013, a dozen of eggs cost $1, but in 2023, it's $4. Since inflation is inevitable, most countries try to settle for an inflation rate of about 2 to 2.5% 2 yearly. This is equivalent to the money your value loses every year in savings. This is why putting all your money in the bank actually becomes a problem in the coming years. And the common solution you will always hear to this problem is investing. It's a simple idea of making your money work instead of just letting it sit idly in a savings account. I bet you've heard about something called the stock market and how it's one of the easiest ways to invest money. And this begs the question, what is the stock market? How do you begin investing? And are the rewards truly as fantastic as they say? Who's winning in this economy right now? The rich. Guys like me. You know, we have gone from having 93 billion, the top 400, in, in, in 1982 to having 2.4 trillion, 25 for one. The market is a pretty common word. It's simply a place where things are sold and bought. Every country in the world has a wide array of markets, especially in large economies like the US and the UK. For example, the car market deals with buying and selling of cars. The real estate market deals with buying and selling of houses. And the stock market deals with buying and selling of stocks. Here's a simpler way Warren Buffett explains it. All there is to investing is picking up good stocks at good times and staying with them as long as they remain good companies. And so, you may ask, what is a stock? A stock, also called a share, is a term used to represent part ownership in a company. Let's say, for instance, that company A has 100 shares. If the founder of this company owns all 100 shares, then the founder owns 100% of the company. However, if the founder owns 50 shares, he owns 50% of the company. The individuals who buy shares or ownership from companies like these are called shareholders. But this entire arrangement can make you wonder why anyone would want to give away ownership of their company in the first place. Well, to answer that question, let's consider a typical scenario. Imagine you owned a fast food company and business is booming. Based on this success, you get the impression that your company has great potential. So, you want to expand your business to reach more people in other countries. But there's a problem. You don't have the financial resources to do so. You need more capital. Now, you can go back to the bank and get a loan, but that would entail paying interest, which won't be budget-friendly. And besides, there's a chance the bank may refuse your request altogether. And so, this is why the safest and quickest way to get this money you need is to sell your company shares. To do this, you can reach out to the people you trust privately and ask them to invest in your company. Or, you can make your shares publicly listed so anyone can buy. In case you're wondering how this is done, it's always done through a special event called an Initial Public Offering, or IPO. An IPO is when your private company becomes a public company. If you scan 100 IPOs, you're going to come up with something cheaper than scanning 100 companies that are already trading in the auction market. It is, it is more of a negotiated sale. Before going public, you'll have to decide how many shares you wish to issue to the public. This number of shares is often termed float. Note that you can't fully control the initial value of each share. Factors like consumer demand, competitor success, and the overall success of your business so far will all come into play to determine the share price. Public companies list their shares on what we call a stock exchange. To explain better, let's use a meat market as an example. In your state or city, there may be numerous meat markets, but you, as a meat seller, can only pick one to set up your meat stall. Now, imagine that these meat markets in your state are stock markets. Instead of buying and selling meat, you're buying and selling stocks. 
It's always up to you to pick the exchange with which you sell your company shares. Note that every exchange has its own requirements for companies to list or trade shares. Some top exchanges in the US include the NASDAQ and the New York Stock Exchange. NASDAQ is quite popular because they have some of the biggest names in the tech industry, like Apple, Amazon, and Google. There are thousands of stock exchanges like these worldwide. The stockbroker is another term that you must be familiar with when dealing with stocks. This is a person or organization that acts as the middleman, purchasing or selling stocks for the parties involved. Before the internet, brokers used to assemble at a stock exchange trading floor to buy or sell orders for their clients. But thanks to technology and the internet, everything is automated and done using computer algorithms. There is little need for trading floors. Companies like NASDAQ have no trading floors at all. Warren Buffett considers technology like this a huge advantage. You, you can rearrange your business empire, which you own through that little portfolio that you have. You can rearrange that you know, at a moment's notice with practically no cost. It's a huge advantage, which people turn into a disadvantage. So, let's say that you want to buy stocks. How do you go about it? Well, as the investor, you will have to visit a broker and order a share while listing a few details to help the broker make the right decision. Such details may include specifying what company shares you wish to buy. Usually, these shares are represented using an abbreviated name called a ticker symbol. For instance, Tesla's ticker symbol is TSLA. After this, you'll have to specify whether you want to buy new shares or sell shares you already own. Next you'll be prompted to indicate the type of buy or sell order. Just so you know, this procedure is necessary. The stock market is like an auction house with thousands of buyers bidding for a particular price they buy a share for and thousands of sellers requesting a particular price. When the buyer and seller agree, the trade commences. This simple scenario happens millions of times daily as stock prices fluctuate. So, now let's talk about the order types. A market order is an order that enables your broker to buy that stock at whatever price it's currently trading at in the market. A limit order is an order type that sets a minimum price of which you intend to sell or a maximum price at which you intend to buy. It's kind of like a typical auction. The only issue here is that if the stock price never gets to the price that you set, that buy or sell order will never be fulfilled. There are many other order types, but these are the two major ones you'll find at any broker or exchange. Once you've settled on the order type, just let your broker know the number of shares you intend to buy, and that's all. In the past, doing all of this would be quite difficult, as it would entail making several phone calls, visiting trading floors, and getting certificates. But now, you can simply buy or sell stocks online with your phone. So, now the big question is, how do you intend to use all this knowledge to make the right investment decision? Well, let's get to the most important part, investing. If I have something available that I think will give me 8% for sure, and I can buy all I want of it, and you've got a perfectly good investment that I think will earn seven. There are various players in the game of investing. There are retail investors and institutional investors. Retail investors are people like you and me who are making investments for personal gains or profit. Institutional investors, on the other hand, refer to corporate organizations like banks and pension funds. These are the big players in the game that feature top market experts and invest huge sums of money for their clients. However, for small investors like you and me, the goal is to make money by buying stocks at a low price and selling at a higher price. This is why you'll usually hear the term buy low, sell high. As simple as it sounds, it requires you to know what stocks will go up in price so that you can cash in on these. But you see, this becomes a challenge because stock prices are influenced by many factors, which makes them hard to predict. Supply and demand are the main factors that affect stocks. For instance, if Amazon announces a new product today, there will be a subsequent increase in demand. As such, we expect Apple stock prices to increase. 
In this scenario, shareholders can expect to earn more from their shares and buyers who are also willing to purchase shares at higher prices. This is typically how stock prices increase in value over the years. However, as I said, there are many variables to this equation. All sorts of things can affect stock prices. For instance, it could be a new government policy, a new CEO, or a new competitor. You'd agree that it's pretty much impossible for an everyday worker or home mom to stay up to date with all this information every day so as to monitor their shares. This is why experts like Warren Buffett will always advise against holding shares for the short term. One of his most popular quotes says, Time is the friend of the wonderful company, the enemy of the mediocre. Warren Buffett typically built his $100 billion net worth from holding company shares for decades, regardless of market fluctuations. This is the best way retail investors like you and I should go. Warren Buffett's particular strategy is called value investing. It simply involves carefully studying a company, its purpose or service, as well as its assets and liabilities. If the company seems to be of high value, Warren Buffett would invest in them even if their stocks weren't doing so well initially. Just so you know, short-term investing is when you buy stocks and hold them for a few days or even a few hours before selling them. Some people consider this lucrative or quick, but it's too risky and easy to lose money this way. Moreover, you constantly have to watch out for when to buy or sell. This can be really stressful and time-consuming. Plus, like Buffett would say, Remember that the stock market is manic depressive. Your alternative is to make your stock investment a passive one. In other words, the idea is to set it once and leave it while it accumulates returns over the next few years. Then, at the end, you cash out once. But for some of us, analyzing the market or finding the right company to invest in can be difficult. This is where indexes come in. Indexes are simply a measure of stock performance. They give us vital information about how the stock market is performing overall. A very popular example of this is the S&P 500, short for the Standard & Poor's 500. This stock index tracks the performance of the top 500 companies listed on the U.S. Stock Exchange. Another top index is the Dow Jones. This is another United States stock index that tracks the performance of the top 30 companies on the U.S. Stock Exchange. These are just the well-renowned indexes in the US. For other nations, like the UK, there's the FTSE 100, which measures the top 100 companies listed on the UK Stock Exchange, and so on. The core purpose of these indexes is to let you and me know how the stock market is currently performing. But there's another benefit, index funds. Even Warren Buffett admits how lucrative these can be. Index funds overall have delivered for shareholders, a result that has been better than Wall Street professionals as a whole. And Jack, at a minimum, has left in the pockets of investors without hurting them overall in terms of performance at all. He's put tens and tens and tens of billions into their pockets. Index funds and ETFs, or exchange-traded funds, allow you to invest in a fund containing all these top-performing stocks simultaneously. The two are almost the same, with very few differences. Let's take the Vanguard S&P 500 fund, for instance. This index fund contains all the company stocks in the S&P 500, but you can invest in it as though you're investing in a single stock. In other words, buying one share of Vanguard's S&P 500 is equivalent to buying tiny bits of shares from all the 500 companies in the S&P 500. Buying an index fund like this is an easy way to diversify your investments without worrying about monitoring or managing multiple stocks simultaneously. You can enjoy all the profits from the 500 companies with a single investment. This is why you'll always hear many financial experts like Buffett advise retail investors to put their money in ETFs like the S&P 500. He once said, In my view, for most people, the best thing to do is owning the S&P 500 index fund. But let's be honest, how much money can you actually make from the stock market? Honestly, we've been in a bull market for the last couple of decades. A bull market is when stock prices rise, whereas a bear market is when prices go down. 
In bull markets, investors gain more and more profits from their investments. But this doesn't erase the possibility of a market crash. So, this is why you should be content with getting anywhere from 6 to 10% of your investments per year. I know this doesn't sound very lucrative, but remember, the stock market is not a gold mine you dig into. Investing profitably involves playing the long game of patience. You'd be surprised how much your money will double or triple if you allow the stocks to grow over the next 5 to 10 years. Don't get swayed by these gurus promising you crazy returns and short-term gains. Here's a tip from Warren Buffett. So, when people see gold go up a lot, I mean, if your neighbor owns some gold and you think you're smarter than he is and you didn't own any, and your wife says to you, you know, you know, how come that jerk next door is making money, you know, and you're just sitting here, uh, it, it can start affecting behavior. And people like to get in on things that have been rising in price and all of that. But most people make the mistake of jumping into the stock market without doing their due research or seeking guidance. Warren Buffett would always say, never invest in a business you cannot understand. Here's one thing to remember, buy the dip. I know you've heard this phrase many times and it probably sounds annoying, but it's very important. Most people are afraid to invest when stock prices go down. They only like investing their money when they see prices climbing. But you see, the best time to invest is always when the share prices fall. That way, you can buy more shares and earn more when the prices climb back up. Also, I'd personally advise you invest about 10% of your monthly earnings. The reason for this is that you can leave it for a very long time without worrying about it. Plus, you would have nothing to lose if the investments don't pan out. Also, remember, you're to invest those shares for at least 10 years to see good profits. Simply ignore market bull runs and bear runs and avoid panic sales. Focus on the long term. If your portfolio is diversified enough, your profits and losses will balance out and you'll never lose money. And besides, you never actually lose money on a trade until you sell the stocks you bought.